Hello everyone, glad you could join us. This is actually a pre-recorded episode on this Friday, September 4th. I needed to be on the road to my farm to go mow today, and the time I'd be on the road would be about the time of our broadcast today. I do want to remind you that starting Monday, all the episodes will be pre-recorded, but I think some nice additions will be made to the program that you'll enjoy. Let me know what you think. And now let's begin today with a trivia question. This is a little bit easier after having some hard ones this week. Which prophet worked with Bathsheba to ensure that Solomon would become king rather than his older brothers? Which prophet worked with Bathsheba to make sure that Solomon got the throne? If you don't know, I'll give you a little hint. The very same prophet that confronted David over his major sin. That might help. And now for some good humor. I don't mind going to a church service in a drive-in theater, said one person. But when they hold the baptisms in a car wash, that's going too far. (laughs) We've seen some churches meet in drive-ins and in parking lots during this challenging time. Here's another one. Miss Gladys was a regular fixture in morning worship at First Church. On this one particular morning, the pastor's message went on forever. Some in the congregation dozed off. Following the service, she walked up to a very sleepy-looking visitor to welcome him. Hello, I'm Gladys Dunn. To which the visitor replied, you're not the only one. Get it, Gladys Dunn, glad he's done. Oh, that's not a problem here at First Church, right? If it is, let me know. (laughs) Many years ago, the Moody Church News carried a pretty funny story about a woman in a small town who was known for being a gossip. One day on vacation, she visited the offices of the Chicago Daily News. She was wearing a white dress and inadvertently leaned against a wall where a freshly printed copy of the front page was hanging. It was a hot, humid day, and some of the print came off on the back of her white dress. Later, as she walked down the street to meet her husband, She noticed that people walking behind her were snickering. When she reached the place where her husband was waiting, she asked him if there was anything on her back that shouldn't be there. As she turned around, he read the large black reversed letters, Daily News. Realizing the appropriateness of the words, he said, No, dear, nothing's on your back that doesn't belong there. Oh, my goodness. Some who gossip might frame such an activity as the daily news. But listen to what Proverbs 11:13 says. A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy person keeps a secret. There were three elderly men talking about how they wanted their grandchildren to remember them 50 years from now. The first one said, I would like my grandchildren to say he was a hard worker. The second one said, 50 years from now, I want them to say he was a loyal family man. Turning to the third person, he asked, so what do you want people to say about you in 50 years? Me? The third one replied, I want them to say he certainly looks good for his age. (laughs) The truth is we all want people to say good things about us. We all want to be loved. We all want to be affirmed. We all want to be appreciated. And that's one of the reasons why gossip is so hypocritical. We want people to say nice things about us, but when we rip someone behind their backs, we're denying them the very love and encouragement we want for ourselves. That's a good way to frame the activity of gossip. Matter of fact, Ken Sand in his book on conflict resolution called The Peacemaker gives the following definition for gossip. 
To gossip means to betray a confidence or to discuss unfavorable personal facts about another person with someone who is not part of the problem or its solution. That's a really, really good definition. There's a story about a woman who once took a temporary job working for a large company. She determined that even though the job was simply answering the phones in a small branch of the company and far below her capabilities, that she would do it to the best of her ability. Every day in the course of her new job, the woman talked with employees at other locations and she felt the negativity in their voice as they spoke of her new employer. Knowing he was not the ogre they thought he was, she decided as she drove home one evening, there was something she could do to help improve their opinion of him. Beginning the very next morning, she began to pay attention to every comment he made. Each time she heard him compliment one of his employees, she would later call and tell them what she had heard. They were at first surprised and then thrilled to discover the high regard that he had for them. For months, she continued her campaign, passing along every positive comment she heard and keeping to herself the occasional negative one. Soon, the area of the corporation the man managed began showing drastic improvement. Profits were rising, higher-ups were noticing, and the man implemented an employee reward program that recognized the highest achievers and looked for things to praise in up and comers. It wasn't long before the employees were wild about their boss. The negative atmosphere was transforming to one that was positive and uplifting. Who wouldn't want to work for a place like that? Every time we hear something about someone, we have a choice to make. We can pass along the comment to others or not. If the comment is negative, we really aren't doing anyone else or ourselves any favors by repeating it. It doesn't matter if it's true or false. A good result is never achieved by talking bad about someone else. It may create some excitement momentarily to the bearer of the latest gossip, to be the bearer of the latest gossip, but the thrill quickly goes away and much damage may have been done. And there is always the old saying that what goes around comes around. You may be the subject next time, and anyone who will participate in gossip with you will also gossip about you. Hmm. Good gossip, there's a new phrase, on the other hand, can completely transform a situation or relationship from hopeless to joyful. How many times each day do you have an opportunity to bolster another's esteem by repeating good gossip instead of bad? How many lives could you touch by passing along a compliment you heard about them today? We all remember comments that were made about us and to us as children. The words you say can help make or break someone's self-esteem. You have the power to help or harm every time you open your mouth. Nothing stops a gossip faster than saying, Really? He always speaks so highly of you. So live that you wouldn't be ashamed to sell the family parrot to the town gossip. Isn't that pretty good? That's an excerpt from Sidewalk Flowers, Volume 1. A great lesson. One that we can all work on. Church leaders... Pastors, laity, families, employees, employers, all of us could probably do a little better when it comes to gossip. Instead of repeating negative gossip, make an effort to repeat good gossip. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this lesson on this Friday, and we ask that you would lead us into our weekend, help us to launch into a time of Rest, if possible, maybe some time with family and safe environments, maybe a hobby or a trip, and, of course, worship. Prepare us for another day of worship, 
so that it will set up our week in a positive fashion. Guide and direct us every day. And we pray that you would continue to keep us safe and sound. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. And now for the answer to our trivia question. The prophet who worked with Bathsheba to make sure that Solomon was king because he wasn't the oldest was the prophet Nathan. He figures predominantly in the life of David and Solomon. There's a new one for some of us and maybe one that we had as kind of a reminder or maybe it came real quick. Hey, I wish you well. Take care. God bless. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.